Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. All right, hey everybody, Zach here for Friday Night Flies. Uh, as you can see, I'm not in my normal garb. Uh, today is actually Thursday, the day I'm filming this, so it's uh, jerseys for Humboldt. Um, kind of hits a little close to home for a lot of us, I know. Um, kind of a sad time and a tragic accident, that's for sure. My cousin actually plays in that league, so he knows a few of the guys, and uh, yeah, it's a terrible thing to have happened. Uh, but yeah, so on a brighter side, let's uh, get down to some fly time, shall we? Um, so I'm doing, I'm going to butcher this name. I've already screwed it up a few times, telling people what it's called. Uh, the the Dial Bach. It's a Welsh fly. Um, I posted this on my Instagram and on the Friday Night Flies Facebook page a little while ago. Um, I've done them up in a whole bunch of different colors. It's one of those patterns that imitates a little bit of everything. Um, and it's pretty simple as well. Uh, super sparse, super simple, super slim. You do it in a variety of sizes, imitate scuds, chronomids, nymphs, whatever. Um, they work in the rivers as well from what I've been told and read about. Um, but definitely this one's more for the still waters, but again, throw it in the rivers, you never know. Um, so it's an unweighted fly. So I'm definitely going to be fishing this on a sinking line uh, of some sort and uh, either trolling it, casting it, stripping, uh, you can hang it under an indicator. This, again, this pattern is super versatile. So I'm going to try and squeeze in two versions of it for you. Um, I've got one with a holographic cheek on it, another one with a holographic rib and some jungle cock cheeks. Um, so we're going to kind of give both a go and hopefully I can squeeze them into one video for you. Um, they go together super easy. It's a fun one, uh, so let's head on down and check it out. All right, so there it is, the Di Di Bach. Sure, I'm screwing that up. Leave it to the Welsh to have unpronounceable words. Anyways, no offense to our Welsh friends. Uh, I got a few of them myself. They're all a little crazy. <laughs> Not to say you're all crazy, but you just might be. Anyways, so this is the black and blue version that I've done. I've done it in red. I've done it in orange, which is the next one. I've done it in purple. That's the orange version. It's a pretty cool pattern. Like I said, super versatile. Imitates a lot of different insects. Let's roll these sleeves up and get to it. So in the vise, I got a hook here somewhere. There it is. It is a must add 3906 size 12. The Mustad 33.99 is a great hook as well. I've tied them on both. They're very similar. This one's a, a smidge beefier, I believe, and maybe a little bit uh, shorter in shank length. But it's a pretty wicked hook. These are quickly becoming one of my favorite hooks for still waters. And we just got a whole bunch in from Mustad. So thank you, Mustad. Um, so thread just some 70 Danville in black. Now for the tail, I'm just using some hackle fibers. Okay, these are like peacock blue, peacock blue. So you can see here, these ones are quite stiff and they've got the webbiness in the middle, it's quite fine. That's, that's what you want for a good tail feather, especially for nymphs and things like that. For throats, which I'll be using at the front, I'm using a very schloppiny, very webby fiber. Um, these came from the same pack, so really dig through and separate out the, uh, the feathers that you want. So like I said, for the tail, I want a good chunk of these nice stiff hackle fibers here. I'll just kind of roughly align the tips. I'll just pull them away from the stem. And I'll just kind of fold them on, them on itself. Some of those are a little out of alignment. That's okay. Just pluck them out. Roughly align them how I want. There we go. Good enough. So tail length, roughly the, the hook shank and length. You can go a little longer, a little shorter, whichever you prefer. I like mine a smidge shorter, something like that. And then I'll take a wrap underneath to just help prop up those fibers and uh, really helps to lock them in place as well. Now up at the eye, I'll just trim these on an angle, like so. And I'll continue my wraps, just tidy that all up, up to the head. Now on the way back down, especially on these little guys, 
Um, we want to reinforce the peacock kernel because it can be quite brittle. So I've just got some ultra wire and small. This is the blue. So you can see that matches up quite nicely. So this I'll just tie in on the way down. Just to where that tail starts. I'll just tuck that into that material clip on the mongoose. There we go. Now for the body of this one, I'm just using some bright green peacock curl. This goes really well with the color blue for some reason. I really enjoy it. So I'll just grab two strands here. I'm starting to run a little low. I think I got this stuff from Pacific Angler. I gotta get down there and grab some more at some point. You can do this pattern in black and silver, black and gold as well. You name it, the possibilities are endless. So all I did there is I cut off about an inch off the tips. I'll tie these two strands of peacock curl in together. Like so. What I'll do now, I'm gonna use the rotary feature on my vise. I'm just going to wrap these guys forward. It's nice and close. Unwrap some of those wraps at the head there. A little bit more. To about there. Just trap those guys in. A couple wraps at the front. I'll pull them back and wrap over them. I'll just pull those away, keeping my thread tight. If you don't keep your thread tight, you risk having that whole thing unwind on you. Now to help reinforce the peacock curl, I'm not going to wrap the same way I just did. I'm going to counter wrap it. So I'm going to wrap the opposite way. I'll try to get four or five wraps in. That's four. There's number five. I'll trap that in. Three wraps on top. Another one here. I'll just wiggle to break that guy off. There we go. I'll just slightly tidy up the head a little bit. Some of those peacock fibers like to go a little crazy on you. So like I said, for the throat, I'm going to use the really webby fibers that we've got here. So I'll take a decent little clump. You can go as thick or as sparse as you like with these. Just pull it away from the stem and line them up. If there's any long ones, just pull them out. And this I'm just going to line up the tips so they go roughly in line with the hook point. Now pinch them against the side. I'm going to run my thread through my fingers. I'm just going to do a pinching loop. Pull down nice and tight. Really looking forward to fishing these. If Mother Nature ever lets some nice weather come out. Got some crazy weather lately. Springtime. Should be nice. <laughs> Not raining every day. Anyways, there we go. So there's my throat. And now I'm going to add in the cheeks. So the cheeks on this one, this is the holographic cheek version. So this is just some hollow tinsel in medium size and blue. See, so nice sparkle to this. Really nice color. There's a couple different ways you can do this. I'm just going to tie in one length short with the curve going inwards on the fly. I'm just going to pinch it on my side. I'm going to take a few wraps up the head. I'm going to pull the long end over. I'm just going to have that sit on your side, kind of like so. And now I'll just kind of tidy up the head a little bit. Get all that going there. I'm just going to cover up all that tinsel that's showing. You could take a Sharpie if you wanted to. That speeds up the process a little bit. So you can make the heads as big or as small as you like. I don't mind having kind of a medium sized head on there. And then we just go ahead and whip finish. Just a single one's fine. So we're gonna add a nice shiny head. So with these cheeks, what I like to do, is I like to cut them on a little bit of an angle from the bottom up. You can make them as long or as short as you like. I like them kind of somewhere around there. Hopefully you guys can see that there. And to finish off the head, just some solar res bone dry. Nice little coat. Careful not to get any on the peacock curl or on the throat. This gives that nice sexy head that we like. And just zap it with our lights. 
There you go. There is the size 12. So the 12s and the 14s, I would definitely do with the wire rib. Because the next one that we do, it's a little bit bigger. And uh, this will be more the 8s and 12s. This is how I would do it. You can do it however you like. Beauty of fly tying. There's a million ways to do the same pattern. So there we go. So this is a 3906 Mustad in a size 10. Like I said, 8s, 10s, 12s, 14s, 16s, definitely the sizes I would like to do this in. Now this is going to be the orange version. So again, I've got one of these stiffer fibered hackle fi feathers for the tail. And I'm just going to grab a clump of, clump of fibers here, kind of line the tips on the stem, and just pull them away. Now this guy again, I'm going to make that roughly hook shank in length. I like mine to be end up being a little bit shorter. This is where I kind of pull them in a little bit more that way. Take a wrap underneath. That just kind of helps to splay them out a little bit and really lock them in place. I just wrap up towards the eye. Here's where I trim these. So I just trim them on a bit of an angle. Tidy that up there. Now the rib on this one is going to be a little different. So I'm going to use some holographic tinsel, small size and orange. Okay, Because these bodies are a little bit bigger, you want something that's a little bit uh, thicker than just the small wire. I'm just going to tie that in on my side. You can definitely use a medium sized wire if you like, or uh, holographic tinsel. That's all up to you. Now for the peacock on this one, I'm using some dyed orange. Okay, and you can get this stuff in just about any color, even though it is kind of hard to find. When you do find it, stock up. I'm actually looking for some black right now, so if anybody has any idea where I can score some black peacock curl, I would be pretty stoked. In the Vancouver area, that is. So these I'm just going to tie in on the side. Take my thread up to the eye. Grab these using the rotary feature on the mongoose. Just gonna wrap those guys up. Rotary makes everything so much easier for applications like this. Especially with materials that are quite brittle like peacock curl. Alright, take that right up to there. Cross it with our thread couple wraps, a couple in front, kind of wrap back on it a little bit. Here we can just keep our thread tight and pull it away. One weird straggler fiber there. There we go. Now since this is a little bit wider, I'm not too worried about counter ribbing it. You definitely can if you want. But I find I get four to five wraps with the holographic tinsel. And it will uh, It'll secure that well enough, or at least as good as a holographic tinsel can. You could counter rib that with wire if you wanted to. Just kind of tidy up that head just a smidge. Now I'm just going to invert the fly. And again, I'm going to take a nice webby fibered hackle feather here for the throat. Got some nice bits down here. Just kind of Roughly align those tips and just pull it away from the stem. Just kind of group those together again, about the length to the, uh, the hook point. Nice pinching loop. Really secure that down nice and tight. It's sitting good. You can always adjust it if it's not sitting how you want. Trim that guy away. And lock all those throat fibers down. Kind of like so. That's looking all right. Now for the cheeks on this one, like I said before, I'm just going to use some jungle cock. So I got this from a good family friend of mine. Um, different ways you can do it. There's these really tiny little ones here. You can fit one on each side or you can even find a split, a split feather um, and you can double it over. This one I'm going to go with a couple of the smaller ones this time. 
Just got to find a pair here. With these feathers, you want to really get down as close to the, uh, the hide as you can. Because the stems are quite brittle. Alright, so I got two, three there. I'll keep that third one. There is the imitation jungle cock as well that you can get. I've seen it in stores. I'm sure it will get better the more generations that they come out with it, but stuff I've seen so far I'm not a big fan of. I got one eye here. I'm gonna tie them in separately. So where that black portion is, that's where I'm gonna have my thread. So the eye is gonna be hanging out behind that. Just a couple wraps there, just to lock it in place. Just gonna get it sitting how I like. I got another one here. Now when it comes to jungle cock, especially for myself, I'm not going to be buying anything better than a, a C-grade cape if I'm going to buy one. Um, just because I'm going to be fishing these flies. You will get a few really nice fibers in the B and C uh, A-grade capes, but the thing with the C's, you get a lot of split, split eyes, kind of like that one there. But really, if you're going to be fishing them, you don't want to be uh, too worried about them if you lose them or break them off. Or... So I'm just going to double these back over. A couple tight, tight snug wraps there. I'm going to keep my tension on my thread. I'm going to pluck away the stems. Kind of like so. That split eye is a little crazy. That's alright. Like I said, I'm going to be fishing these so I'm not too worried about how perfect of how the eyes look. Now I'm just going to Tidy up that head a little bit. Ooh. Just knock my thread there. I undid all those wraps. I was going to clean that up anyway. So there we go. All right, so just a few wraps. Just tidy up that head a little bit. Kind of like so. I'm going to go straight and do a whip finish. Finish tidying up that head. And we'll trim away thread. Little straggler fibers in here. Trim away like so. Like I said if I had a sharpie handy, I would definitely uh, color up that thread just a little bit. There we go. I'm just gonna a little bit of solar res bone dry on there. I'll cure that up. Kind of like so. And there you have it. The Dial Bach. Probably got that pronunciation wrong again. There you have it. The blue and the orange. Pretty cool little flies. Supposedly they do really well in the still water and I can't wait to fish them. Alright, let's head on up and sign out. Alright guys, there you have it. Two patterns for you this week, as seeing as I missed last week. Um, not too stoked on the placement of those eyes, but you know, I was trying to squeeze two flies in for you. Um, but yeah, super simple one, the D.L. Bach. Pretty sure I'm saying it wrong again. Um, but yeah, cool little fly. Should work quite well. I'm excited to fish it. I'm redoing all of my still water boxes. Um, I've got a few that I'm keeping in, but most of them are brand new this year. So um, I've already filled up one. I'm working on box number two, and I'm probably going to fill up another third one as well. Um, but yeah, it's a fun time. New year, new flies. Hope you guys are doing the same. Um, post some photos to our Facebook page. We love seeing what you guys are tying. Um, share them with us. Uh, if you've got any patterns that you want to see that you're desperate for, um, hit us up and we'll definitely do our best to uh, share that around and try to get you guys uh, what you guys want to see. Um, I might do a dry fly or two in the next couple of weeks. We'll uh, see what's going on. I've got a couple ideas. Um, one for Susan, uh, one of her favorite ones up there in Chetwin, BC. Um, where they love fishing for grayling and such. I've got a couple ideas in mind for uh, a couple of twists on some of her favorite, some old staple BC patterns for sure. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, we'll see you next week. Friday Night Flies would like to thank the following sponsors. Superfly, Solarez, Chinook Wind Outfitters, Dr. Slick, Griffin, Stonefoe.